Welcome to Andy Decodes, the 12th dimension. Sit back and enjoy as we dive deeper down into the rabbit hole. Hello, welcome to the show. Um, Chris will be with me in one moment. He's just sorting something out. Sorry, I was just laughing at... um, Simon saying intro makes his cats go weird. I don't think it's intro, mate. But anyway, right. So a couple of updates before we do start. Um, first one is obviously the membership. And the more members, the better. The more we get more emojis. And I will be doing live investigations. Now, some of them, the bigger ones, are going to be members only um, for about a week maybe two and then it will be shown for everyone else who subscribes to the channel and those that don't subscribe so that's that there's going to be quite a few um streams over the next few weeks that the chat is going to be members only as well the rest of you can view but you're not going to be able to type anything so it's just how we're going to have to do things um going forward not every single one i will let you know a week or two before just to make it fair um so that's that one secondly i do have a weekend ticket to give away for manchester um awakening expo in on the 26th and 27th of august now i've not decided yet how i'm going to give the ticket away and there's two options on this one ticket um first well first condition is you will have to make your own way there if i'm passing where you live i can pick you up that's not a problem or if i know somebody that lives near where you are i could arrange for you to be picked up if you don't drive for what or you know the way of getting there i'll do my best to sort that out secondly you do have to enter um the building with me because the tickets are on my phone now you can either do the saturday and the sunday or you have the option, if you can only do one day, one person can have it for the Saturday and the, another person can have it for the Sunday. So that's that one done. So let me know about that. I will be doing a live stream between now and next Friday on winning the ticket. Like I said, I'm not sure how I'm going to do it, but do keep jumping back to the website and all the information will be on there. Third, oh, oh, third lot of information, Canic Chase. So we are going to Canic Chase the 9th and 10th of September. We're doing a stay over. Um, if you are interested in going, please go to the website, click on the link. You will be able to send me an email direct. And that way I'll know who's going and we can arrange everything that way. And I'll let you know exactly the location. I'll, I'll let you know the exact location the day or the morning that we're going to be going. We're not going to be meeting until about 2, 3 o'clock anyway. Um, we're going to be staying over and then coming back. Hopefully, if we don't get attacked or become part of the missing 411, we'll be coming back around midday or even later on the Sunday. It's down to you guys what time you want to get, go, uh, what time you want to leave. So, And that's the 9th and 10th. All the information for everything I've just said is on the website. So once Chris has finished what he's doing, I will bring him on the screen. And here he is. Perfect timing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I've got the little monitor at the bottom, otherwise you'd have been <laughs> mid whatever you was doing. Naked. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't like to say. Right. Over there, I take it, yeah. 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 So we are gonna be doing we're gonna be adding something onto this. What I I've been kind of doing Chris's editing about it, to be honest. Um, it was an image that he sent me, what, nearly two years ago? When you first came on, wasn't it? Yeah. So yeah. it must be, what, 18 months ago? Yeah. So 
I, do you want to do you want to talk about this first before we go? Well, make, should we, make, yeah, should we do this and get out of the way and then? Yeah, we can... yeah. So we're, we're kind of, well, we came. We want to kind of just talk about disclosure in general. So that was the kind of idea. Uh, I kind of chat about um, what's happened up to now, roughly, just like any overview, where we think it's going to go, and then what questions is that going to present moving on for that. So uh, that was the kind of idea of the night, just to get a general chat. Yeah, everybody in the chat, obviously. Hi, everybody in the chat as well. Um, feed in questions, feed in ideas, because this as things is going to come out, obviously, after after this goes, oh, I'm we're saying that as if it's going to happen, right? But we'll get into all of that. Um, <laughs> yeah. But um, it's the questions it's going to arrive after that. There's so many questions. It's going to, it's going to ask. It's going to answer like um, some questions, maybe, but then it's going to um, create a lot more. So on that note, of disclosure. Um, Andy's asked me to disclose this uh, picture. So, so a bit of background on it. <clears throat> um, I had a friend who knew a few people were at a wedding and um, up in Scotland, and it was this 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 hotel, and a bit of synchronistic kind of thing linked to it as well because one of my friends who's been on me is on the podcast, and then again Mark Anderson, um, he is from the same town as this picture was taken. And he, he was telling me about this place. It's, it's called Mark Inch, and it's got like a stone circle in that. And it's got like a, a big hotel next to where the stone circle is. It's supposed to be haunted, all that kind of stuff. Um, and uh, he was talking about um, how the place has got like kind of some funny energies about it and just a kind of, kind of mysterious place in general. And he was talking about, about links with ley lines for Rosalind and things like that. And so he was talking about that, but... Um, I plucked my interest, but um, it was like, obviously you hear kind of stories and stuff about certain places. It was in Mark's kind of idea because obviously he is uh, he was from that kind of local town. So when um, when um, it was it wasn't long after that actually. I kind of started the podcast and I was talking to one of my friends who wasn't into paranormal stuff at all, uh, and he said to me, "You need to see this." And we all got some things that we sit on them and again and whatever. And it's, I mean. You, I've never shared it online because, like, one, it's like, it's permission wise to share it, but to say I've had it, you know what I mean? But at the same time, I've blacked out the faces and all that kind of stuff, you can see it. I've never yeah. shared it as well because as soon as you share some of these things online, like a, a UFO picture, a ghost picture, you get so many people just trying to be skeptical of it and, and talk about how crap it is or it's this or it's that, it's a tricky yeah. thing with it. So the first time I seen the picture, I kind of thought, I kind of thought that it was a double exposure. And um, yeah. you can't really see a lot. I mean, it's been brightened up a lot to actually see what it was. But um, I'll tell you a bit about the story first. So it was like a wedding at this place. Um, so a wedding at the place, there was three girls getting a picture. And after the picture, the cameraman said to him, who was behind you? And they said, nobody was behind us. And there was nobody there behind them. And then when I looked at the picture, it looked like there was somebody squeezing in the back of them. Right, and they, they would have felt this. I mean, you can actually kind of see um, like something squeezing in the back here. You can hardly really see it. Yeah. You can make it in the original picture. You could actually just make it a kind of outline of a chin and some um, a, a bit of teeth or whatever. But when you actually toned it down or up, you get to see a lot more features in that. Do you want me to put the full with the three people in it first? Yeah, put, put that up first time. Right. So. So with so, this, I know, I know uh, this just looks like somebody in the back of them, right? But they, when you look at, when you actually see the rest of the picture, you can notice that there's nobody there, right? But the actual but, shadow line and that kind of stuff. They also, as well, it, it hasn't got like the line where you get a uh, the indent between your your nose to the top of your lip, yeah, right? And I know no nose. Say, they would just if you put this with line and see it, it was somebody just jumped in the back of them. There wasn't the anybody there. A lot of paranormal well, stuff. Yeah. And well, it does can I just you... say, sorry, Chris, can I just say, when you first sent me this, yeah. I noticed the lack of nose. So where the nose and the whatever that bit's called, I don't know. So I we, was laughing about it saying it looked like Voldemort out of Harry Potter. Yeah. And, and uh, but if you look to uh, the girl in the middle with the dark hair, she her face kind the person in the background it kind of fades out there's no even though the hair's covering you yeah. should still be able to see the so, shape of the face but there's nothing so there directly right behind him was uh 
a, a dense group of fir trees that was all um, kind of cut in, and they were up, they were up against that, and they would have felt if somebody was in the back of them because this is tuck, a tucked chin right down like over their shoulders, so they felt it. But when yeah. you can see that there is no picture hardly showed it, there is no picture actually. Um, it was just a very very kind of faint line, but when you actually lighten it right up and stuff like that, this is what you see. And I mean, when you zoom into it and look at that, it, it's, it's it doesn't do it justice here because obviously we've this is actually zoomed in and zoomed in again, yeah. and then we're working with the color and stuff like that. But that that was the there in the picture, and it was yeah. um, when the when the cameraman said to them, they said no, there was nobody there. And I seen the chat with them talking about and stuff about how like weird and creepy it was and all that kind of stuff. Um, but I so that's it. Some people might not think it's nothing. Um, some people might just think it's, it's bullshit, but somebody's jumped in the back of them and it just looks like that. But it's a, it's a genuine picture. I've never shared it um, just for the fact that people will just they could easily say, "Oh, that's this and that's that." So yeah, um, I know that I know like um, some of the people involved, and it's, it's definitely like a, a real general kind of picture. Yeah. Um, so are you ready for the next one? Yeah, go for it. The, it's hard to see; it's kind of pixelated. You know what I mean? But yeah. When I first looked at that, like you said about double exposure, it does, the way they're smiling is like the girl above the same sort of smile. But you can if clearly you, see the one at the back you, is the lower teeth. and the one If you go back, to the, go back to the other pictures, you see it clearer. They start off with. Yeah. When you, um, when that one there, right, when you see that one there, it's, um, when you look at the, you look at the shapes of the teeth and all that kind of stuff and the lips on them, there's, there's no, you can definitely see there's no double exposure in that. Um, no. That's the very, very first thing I kind of thought of was a double exposure and it wasn't. It? Um, but totally, but the place is um, a bit of a weird place, apparently, and that's what kind of popped my interest in it. And then synchronistic for that as well, um, shortly after that, I got invited to a wedding at the same place. Never, right. never been there before in my life. And I got invited to a wedding and I stayed there overnight. Not happened. Nothing. Never bumped into the thing. <laughs> <laughs> not that you know anyway no thanks but, um, yeah but so ju i'll jump back to that other picture Oops. i'm just knocking everything over so in this when you first sent it so i was thinking oh it could be just like her chin and teeth but then if you look you can clearly see the girl who's supposed to be in the picture it's a top row of teeth that you can see more whereas the one that we think is some sort of apparition it's a lower set of teeth. Oh, that's what it looks like to me anyway. Yeah. And it's, it's definitely, it's not got the same, it's not got that part between the, the upper lip, can I remember no. the name here? The upper lip to the, the underside of the nose. That thing's non-existent. It's no. hard to see in this picture because it's quite pixelated. Because but, it's yeah, right but as that. well, if you look at the girl in the middle, I know it's pixelated, but with the dark hair, you should be able to see some sort of outline to the rest of the person's face. But there's nothing there. Yeah, I'll just what I'll do is. And the skin complexion is completely different to everyone else. I know if it was a person, then I'm going to just I'm going to change you so you can actually see this one. This one better, right? Okay. So you'll actually um Yeah, just let me open this then. Yeah. You can actually see I know, I've still... Yeah, I have got the original somewhere. No, I've got it here, so I'm just going to send you it. That. Um, That's right, I'm just waiting for it to come through. So, so you actually see the set, of, all the sets of teeth in there, so you can understand there's no. Uh, yeah. Yes, yeah. Uh, right, do you want me to use that one? He's a minute. I might just come down a bit. I'm just trying to show the people in it. That's it. He's a minute. Yeah. Well, it's you can't see the eyes, so it's going to make it quite difficult. Yeah, go, go for that one. That's all right. Go for that one. Right. Just let me stick it on here then. Um, that's probably a better one because, like you said, you can see the shape of the teeth and what have you. Right. Yeah. Here we go. Yeah. Now, that that's just 
because like you said you can see the dark contrast of when that whoever it is at the back is shadow you see a shadow you see a shadow with the you see a shadow where the, the chin line is and stuff like that yeah, you can see the shadow like under the chin and coming down from the cheek mm -hmm. so it is a lot darker but surely you'd know if there was somebody stood behind you resting their head on your shoulder yeah and the place is supposed to be mega haunted as well um yeah. but it's it's not a place i've looked into in a lot um but uh, i it was, it was quite interesting though just how these things things happen he was talking about it i got sent that picture and it was just weeks after i got invited to a wedding at the same place <laughs> synchronicity chris totally, so yeah. i went looking for the, the stone circle but i didn't find it on that day but there is one there right mm. yeah so if anyone's got any thoughts on that please leave them um in the comment section once this is uploaded to youtube and i can pass it all on to chris but yeah i it's just one of them pictures that you keep looking at and it's like do you know what i mean you're trying to work out where it is you kind of know where it is but you want a definite answer yeah um we're just not getting it I, i've but, got it on it's, it's called in my my files it's called teeth <laughs> <laughs> yeah don't don't watch the movie called teeth have you seen that <laughs> no <laughs> we'll see that i know what it's about don't let your kids yeah don't let your kids watch it <laughs> oh so we, we kind of thought we'd talk about the um disclosure in regards to yes. what happens right yes, so yeah. up until up until um present you know what i mean so if, if you think about disclosure in, in regards to is it going to happen? Is it not going to happen? Is this real? Um, how is it no real? You know what I mean? So we've, we've kind of came from, you look at the US government, for example, you've had um, all the different UFO um, projects that's run over there. So you've had Project Sign, Grudge, Blue Book, um, yeah. Condon Report, um, you've had ATA, OSAP, and now more recently, um, you know, the UAP task for AIMSOG and um obviously now you've got um Arrow. So we're looking yeah. at all that type of stuff over that amount of, of time. There's no way now they can still turn around and say this is this is bullshit. It's, it's no it's, it's no there. There's definitely something there. You know I mean yeah. we know that. You know I mean I think oh, we all yeah. know that. That's why we're kinda of following it. But it's interesting, can you, the stuff that's kind of happened up until now as well. So we've got, obviously, um, for 2017, I've done a bit of thing on this a lot of week there, but just can you cover on some of the, the, the quick things that's happened. So 2017, or just before that, Tom Nolong came out um, with, um, to the Stars Academy with quite a few high-ranking people working with him. And uh, he was on the Joe Rogan show before that who thought he was actually off his head. But then right. Right, he came out with obviously um Jim Semivan, the CIA, working with him, um, Steve Justice, Fair Lockheed Martin, um Louise Elizondo, all these different type of people, you know what I mean? And yeah. so that kind of went on for there. Um we went through for that happened, obviously um Congress and Senate got kicked into touch, they were trying to um look into it a bit more, they were getting briefed, they were getting briefed with people like Leo Zondo and um, a few others. So they were trying to find out more. I mean, so yeah. from that, they started the UAP task force. They had hearings on it or briefings on it, um, all yeah. of which didn't really come in, come in much, but they did ask some good questions at the time. Um, but the, the people who were like, basically getting the questions asked, eh, like Scott Bray and eh, Ronald Moultrie, um, didn't really know their, their history about it, didn't really know much about it, or they were just um, making it, they didn't know anything. <laughs> so, um, so that that was that. So that's kind of went on there. They then went and um, done more into it. They did the 180 day um, page report. They did that. That yeah. came out. There's wee bits in, in the reports which were, some bits that were good, some bits were crap. Um, but yeah. we're getting we we're getting a drip feed of some stuff coming through. Um, obviously then after that, the UAP task force was getting kind of set up. They, at the same time, DOD tried to set up that AIMSOG, which was the Airborne Object Identification and Synchronization Group. That was what it needed to ever pronounce, AIMSOG. Um, so they started that at the same time to say, they basically tell Congress, like, 
we've got this fixed. We'll we'll look at we'll we'll look at this ourselves. Yeah. Um, but that didn't go anywhere. So they obviously started uh, they started with um, the UP task force. That then moved on to um, Arrow, obviously, um, to there. So there's, there's so much kind of stuff happened for that, you know what I mean? So Arrow, all yeah. the main anomaly resolution office, so that's Sean Kirkpatrick. That started, you had obviously David Grush, he was involved in the, the UEP task force, gone back, and then more recent times we know he's came out as well and disclosed a whole raft of stuff, you know what I mean? So yeah. there's, there's loads and loads in there, you know what I mean? Through, which has happened from um, 2016 to present if you even ignore if it has happened pre that right yeah if it's came from as i said project sign blue book we're, we're only talking about american stuff here i mean the now but oh, britain's, yeah. done, britain's done stuff as well you know what i mean so britain's had uap reports um there was a uap report done between the 90s and um early 2000s with the uk it's about 400 to 500 page report um i'll share it in the the, the what do you call yeah, it i was just it. gonna say um obviously with linkedin do you follow yep. seti as search for extraterrestrial intelligence i don't really follow them no no oh, well they i'm they not, not, not looking anymore <laughs> <laughs> well they put quite a lot on i'll send you a couple i'll send you a couple of the posts that they've put on there yeah well, like with the uap stuff and that but are you saying about doing research i did listen to skinwalkers of the pentagon and that is kind of like um, giving disclosure without giving too much away. Yeah. So is it 230 million a year in black money that goes to UAP and UFO research that they don't have to account for? Then you've got all these acronyms of all these different agencies from NIDS to BAS, um, Bob Bigelow, uh, yeah. So, so that Fugle, was that. the new guy at Skinwalker, Brendan Fugel and all them. And it's just there's so much government government involvement with yeah. all these different agencies that are going on. There's too much for there not to be anything happening. So the interesting thing about like OSAP and OSAP was set up. So OSAP was set up pre ATIP. So ATIP came out of OSAP. Yeah. And this is just before this. And then um, that came out. They were, they were only funded $23 million, which isn't a lot of money. But before that, they had, Bigelow had NIDS, which is a National Institute of Discovery Science. They had that. Um, and then from that, obviously, they got funding, and OSAP came out of all that as well. Yeah, but so, then, they, then they brought another one, which was part of BAS. Was it AA, AADI? I can't remember. There's so many abbreviations in that book. It's so there was there was OSAP then ATAC, but OSAP OSAP oh, ATAC, that's it. Aye, so OSAP then ATAC. So um, when OSAP came out, um, so OSAP was the Advanced Aerospace Weapon Systems Application yes. Program, right? ATAC is the Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program. Um, so, so one ATAC, one ATAC was ATAC doing yeah. So one was doing the research, while the other one made sure that they was allowed to do the research without anybody else getting involved. Is that correct? Well, no, not really. I mean, a uh, kind of, but I mean, in regards to when OSAP were doing their studies and stuff, right, they were looking at white phenomena and they looked at a lot of it. They looked at health effects, they looked at UEP, looked at everything. That's where they're looking at Skinwalker Ranch. But the thing that they did as well, which maybe seen yet, that they've compiled all the UEP reports, like is like they go from MUFON, they've got stuff there, obviously, and our government, They've got, they had 20 people at one time working at the same time just collating UEP data. They're supposed to have like the biggest bank yes. UEP data anywhere, right? And uh, so ATIP came out of that. And then obviously it moved on for obviously like Louise Elizondo coming out of ATIP. And then obviously bringing forth like the Tic Tac, um, gimbal videos, all the kind of things came out. But the, 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 the thing with that is though, so where are we going with this, right? So all that's happened, right? Yeah. Everything like that's happened. It's still the Senate's still um, looking into it. So is the, the, the Congress. So recently, there's been a, a briefing with Sean Kirkpatrick, which wasn't that great. But he at that, it looked like to me they're still kind of underfunded and stuff. But now they've got me funding. 
Um, he did on he did on the briefing. He did show um, an orb off a predator drone, but she showed that, and he said, "Well, that's the kind of stuff that we're looking at. Um, yeah. This is the kind of stuff we need to sift through." But he didn't really. He, he still said that he's not getting any proof yet. But in between, in behind the scenes, there is people going to them witness testimony and bringing stuff forward, right? So yeah. the interesting thing that's happened after that, you then had NASA had like a four-hour um, briefing on or hearing on UEP. Um, just have a wee minute. Yeah. Just lost it there. Oh. Right. So, I right, so they were they had a, a, a four-hour presentation in UEP. Sean Kirkpatrick was involved in that as well. Um, in between all that as well, we had the Wilson Davis notes. So the Wilson Davis notes was um, that was Admiral Wilson um, stating to what's his name again, Eric Davis, about him trying to find the program. So he was trying to find the back engineer. Right. Program. Okay. He was like he he should have had oversight on it. Right. Yeah. So he was trying to find this back engineering program within the government. Um, he then was stonewalled and told not to look any further so it affect his career. So, but all was that was all documented. Eric Davis documented that, and it was in um, what was the astronaut's name notes when he died. Um, can't remember his name, but somebody died. One of the astronauts died in his notes. That documentation was in there, right? But the, the key thing with Admiral Wilson uh, documents is to refer to the advanced um, theoretical physics group, which is a group set up in the eighties. And it had people for government, it had people like John Alexander was on it, it had people for MacArthur Douglas, um, like defence contractors, it had Lockheed Martin there. And yep. they were all talking about, in, in the notes for that, Grant Cameron had day notes, right, which linked into that. He was sitting on them until it came out for the Wilson Davis documents. And all of that states that they were then, back in the 80s, mid-80s, looking at stuff to do with UEP, looking at stuff to do with remote viewing, looking at stuff to do with abductions, um, yeah. And looking at stuff today, talking about tracking them and things like that. That was mid eighties, right? So, if you get to where we are now, right, you've got people obviously like um, David Grush. Right? David Grush came out. He's stating yeah. things like obviously that the program's real. There is a back engineering program. You've got um, issues where there's multiple craft being being found over the years, and there's people being killed and all that because it as well. I think like yeah, people yeah. people have vouched for him and they and, and have said basically that he's um he's legit. Yeah. So, so that's that all that kind of stuff. So if this is true, that's where did they go then? So if, if actually this comes out, one of the most recent things that's came out now is Senator Gillibrand has came out with an amendment to the bill that basically the wording in it, it looks like Chris Mellon's wrote it or Louise Elizondo's wrote uh, it. Right. The wording in it, the wording in it basically says it's it's so any defence contractors or private or private contractors like uh, military, military contractors like Lockheed Martin can't even angle at that. So it's talking about things like recovered craft, recovered metal materials, um, contractors working for them, overseeing yeah. it. I mean, all that kind of stuff. So they can oversight it. So it's basically once if this bill gets passed, which it's, it's halfway there the now, but if it gets passed, as soon as that's signed off with Biden. Right, yeah, they've only got 60 days, 60 days to go to Arrow and tell them I've got this stuff, right? And then right. they need to show them it within 180 days. Uh, so, right, so that's I mean, if you look at the word in here, I've not got it up here, we were going to try and get it off the, to be the earth, but the word in it is, 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 is quite, is quite immense because it's it, it talks about back engineering programs, it talk about, talks about non human intelligent craft, um, yeah, talks yeah. About all that. This is done for, for Senator Gillibrand. In America, so it's like it's, it's mad that you're not even seeing this stuff in the news yet. I mean, it's, it's, it's I know, crazy. yeah, right. I've got a question for you. It's not well, it's not from me, it's from nickname. Um, she's put, What are your thoughts on David Grush? Ah, right. See, so, so the, the large craft, so that that one, the, the interesting thing with the large craft is right. So, the, I seen. I never seen the actual podcast, but I seen the clip um, yeah. between Phil Hart and, and Project Unity. So when he, when he was talking about, so one of the first things, so the day with that bill, I just spoke about with Gillibrand, right? So all these companies, like for example, if you can imagine, if there has been craft recovered, now it's in private industry, or the majority yeah. of them might be sitting in private industry, right? 
So if you're sitting like Lockheed Martin's um, bunker somewhere or whatever else, um, it's how did he get to that? So the way they've, they've written that bill, that they should dispose of that. But the thing is, everybody's thinking, right, if they've got all this time, because that, that, that amendment's not going in yet, it probably will not go in until maybe um, later on this year, if not the start of next year, until the actual bill gets signed, right? So you're, there's still a good bit of time here, right? So yeah. if that, they're all, like, they could be hiding the craft everywhere. That means you're right, dig a hole, bury that craft, or go and put it in your garage now because the the, the task force was coming to look at it. You know what I mean, Andy? Go and put this craft in your garage for me, just just because, <laughs> yeah. like, Sean Kirkpatrick from yeah. um, Arrow's wanting to come out and out out the house the So you've got all that kind of stuff going on. So that was one of the questions put to Ross Kilhart about, well, what about them just hiding the craft and all that kind of stuff? He says, well, the, the, question, the thing is, I've been told of a number of different sources that there's there's craft that big that they had to basically build a structure in about it and it's still there and it's known it's known in the US it's off it's off the yeah. US territory. So the interesting thing with that is what came up uh, people were they reckon that this craft was um next to Seoul in Korea, right? Right. In South Korea. And then there was a lot of kind of chatter on a lot of chatter on um, Twitter about it being there's a, a place in the mountain, um, it's east east of Seoul, and it's not far away. You know what I mean, but it's like right in the centre of kind of built up area. But you've got this yeah. big massive um, circular circular concrete structure, right? It sits on a hill. Yeah. Um, so it sits on a hill. I'll, I'll get it up the now, and I can show you, right? So it sits on yeah. a hill. And you can actually Google map it. You can Google, you can street view it, and you can walk up so far, but you've got a gate. And it just says military installation on, on like the Google map things. You can't go any further. You can see the structure from behind you. It's only about four metres high, but as big as wide, but it's really, really wide. But the interesting yeah. thing with the whole, that interview, right, as well, um, Stephen Greer said the exact same um, months and months ago. And a lot of people missed that because it's just one of maybe off the cuff remarks that maybe he said um, about craft as well. And um, Stephen Greer said the exact same thing. So it's no new. I know Ross Coulthard when he brought it out, everybody think that was new. But actually, Stephen Greer kind of um, had brought it up months ago about the same thing. Yeah. And he mentioned, and he mentioned actually, um, Stephen Greer mentioned that it was um, actually it was in Seoul. It was outside Seoul. So that's right. where that came from. I don't know if it's a, if it, if it is in Seoul, but there's other other thing I seen getting banned about as well. What if this this actual um, craft that was supposed to be something built and about it? What about if it's still been built and about it now? What if it's some archaeological? Well, that's it. How long have how long have they been here? Well, that, I mean that's the thing. I mean that's that's, that's the next been question. Here, they've been here forever. Yeah, you know I mean. They've been here 10 years, they've been here 10,000 years. Were they here before us? No, nah. but that's, I mean, that's the interesting thing with that. So I went and street viewed that. I was, I was walking up and down that road <laughs> next to this, <laughs> this structure to find out yeah. there. There's a Buddhist temple um, further up the back, up the back, a few miles away from here. So I was yeah. trying to look at vantage points to see if we could see any of this. It's supposed to be a, some kind of communication place, but it doesn't look like that. It's just a, it's a round, Concrete structure, right? Yeah. And it's got something stuck in the middle. It's really, really, really big. But the, the, the bad thing with it is when you actually go back and you can look in to a certain angle and see it, um, yeah. it's actually built out of stone. It's built out of like, like, kind of just like stone, like as in brick. Kind of like, oh, right, um, yeah, yeah. It's built out of stone. The way it's, way it's built, it's no like something really polished concrete or anything like that. It may have that on the top, it looks like something on like the top, but it's actually built up with bricks and stone. So is, um, does it have stone. a cover over the top? Do you know? Yeah. Yeah, it's it a cover the top. I'll get you a picture here. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. No, because I'm just gonna ask you because I've always thought this theory will always stick that you know how they build military bases in just the most random of places around the world. Yeah. Do you think I know it's going a bit off topic, but I've always wondered though, I don't think I've ever asked you. Do you think that that could be either an entrance to inner earth as such or some sort yeah, so some sort of entrance to inner earth where these underground bases already exist? 
So if you build a military base or a government building over that entrance, then that stops anyone like Joe Public from getting in and doing anything. Straight away, it's government building and it's off bounds to normal civilians. That, that's what you think happens up at uh, Antarctica. Yeah, see, that's another one that's twisting my head a little bit. <laughs> I can't get my head around that at all. Do you want me to get a well, picture of this structure? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Let me... Minute, and I'll yeah. get a picture of it. So I'm just going to open the apps. Right. But um, I was just looking at the bullet points that you sent through. So it's like you said, how long have the government known? Do you think they've known for a long time or they're just like us and they're still trying to find out what is actually going on? Have they actually been told? Well, see, that, that's the thing we, that, that's the thing where you want to get into because like we're when you when you see let's say for example, let's say for example that um the US come out the US come out and basically say that um right we've we've had craft they know we've got craft and they've been there since like the David Grush was saying that the dates back to nineteen thirties, like dates back ninety years, right? That's what he was saying. Right. Yeah. Um but there's been loads of stuff before that. But let's say for example, that's when they started, right? So within that, what kind of questions like let's say they come out and say, right, we have bought recovered craft, I've knew about it for like eighty years or whatever, or ninety years or or whatever. Um yeah. and they actually come out and say something, they say we've got this bit that that basically brings out a whole raft of questions. Eh? How long have they known for a start? Has there been any um colluding with them in any sense? And I mean you you hear yeah. any stories where um there's people getting abducted and stuff like that and there's military people there. I mean, it, it brings a whole raft of different questions into it. You know what I mean? Where what governments know and uh, how long have they known these things? You know what I mean? And it's like I, I know a, I know a story for like the UK in regards to the military. And I mean, it's it's, it's quite a bad one. It's, it's no one would say, but it's like, but it, it relates to like people in the military knowing stuff here, and yes. the same as the same as like the US. You know what I mean? And it's almost like you have this clandestine group, as we know, that that run this show. You know what I mean? And it's it, how could they keep this thing secret for that long? You know what I mean? I know there's people coming out now, but it's um it seems to have that much kind of involvement in it. Yeah. So who do you think then what level, whether it's an agency or whatever you want to call it, who do you think actually runs everything that's going on? I've got well, my see, if, if you're looking at the UA, if you're looking at the UAP topic, right? Um yeah. You look at if you're looking at the solely UEP topic, who I would say is running that show now is private industry. Do you reckon? Right, private industry because you you think about private industry, right? They most of the people work in private industry are ex-military, right? So yeah. there'll all be people who there'll be ex-military, ex-generals, ex-colonels, all that kind of stuff, and they because although they're, they're maybe the military guys, I mean. They're, they're not just military guys. They're trained in like a lot of different stuff and physics Every, and yeah, everything. Um, everything, I mean, everything we don't so, know. so I mean, so some of these guys they leave they leave the military and they go and work for private industry, right? So, and then they will have links and did they get it wrong? They probably some part of the government still linked into it, but at the same time, I think private industry will be calling the shots. And you think it's a whole and the whole the mad thing with this, if you look at it, right, is if you look at an American standpoint, this will happen in the UK as well, right? That you've got. Yeah. The if private industry look after this, right? Because of the fact that it's to protect the public and all that kind of stuff, right? Yeah. Like, but if you look at it in a sense where for them, for this, if someone crashed tomorrow, right? The the amount of kind of different things you can get off that in regards to recovered technology, it's all money. It's all money. Yeah. I mean, it's not. That's why now you probably have crash retrieval teams. They're not the military. The crash retrieval teams are all the private industry ones. And they'll be like, it's getting tracked for the military, past the dame, they'll have teams going out. It's pure paid up. It's paid up. See, as soon as yeah. like they're a crash on, they're out to get it because it's it's not just a brute like to try to hide it. It's probably to try and get the technology yeah. and try to obviously even like the the metamaterials and stuff like that. I mean, all that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? It's yeah. it's going to be it's paid up. So, so you, you've, you've got you've got that kind of sense here, right? And plus the whole kind of things about right. Obviously, somebody's saying black budgets too. I right? but black budgets 
they're, yeah. they're feeding into the private industry. So if you look at it this way, right, you've got the the public, right, who are paying for this, right? Yeah. The public are paying for it through, obviously, the tax and all that kind of stuff. That's fed through black budgets. It's getting pushed into the private industry. It's then getting it's then getting um, covered up again and paid for with yeah. the taxpayer, with the taxpayer. So the taxpayer are paying for retrievals, they're paying for um, the cover-up, they're paying for these private industry contractors to get paid as yeah. well. And then, it's, so it's, it's a, in a pure circle, it's, it's absolutely mad. I mean, you think it. I mean, so they don't want that to come out. No. Well, right, I'm going to throw a question at you. Do you think the Vatican has got any involvement with anything that's going on? Totally. I mean, I, I do you think they run it? Do you think they're the they're the ones up there deciding what happens and when? Who you talking about them or the Vatican? The Vatican. No, I, I wouldn't think so, but I think the Vatican this is just me thinking, I'm not like this, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. expert on it, but I think the Vatican know about that. They've come out with statements in the last um couple of years about UEFs yeah. and stuff like that. They've come out with statements about um, we're all God's children and stuff like that, regardless of where they're from and all that. Statements like that, there's been a lot of number of different statements. I read a book recently from a, a guy called Paul Wallace, who um, who basically worked in the Catholic Church and stuff like that, right? right. Um, some theologian, and he he basically trans, transcribed like um, biblical texts and stuff like that. And see some of the stuff that, that he's looked into now, it goes back to about um, Genesis, where we are from and all that. It's, it's totally mad, like. And I'm sure that the, the Pope commented in his book when it came out as well. Um, yeah. All that, I mean, the Vatican stuff, I think the Vatican do know about that. But it's a case of, um, I don't think they control it though. But the mad thing is where you get part of the military, the military industrial complex has been stated in the past, right? That. Yeah. And then you think to yourself, if they've been colluding way, for example, um, let's say ETs or multi-dimensionals or whatever's there, right? Or non-human entities, as they're calling them now. Um, let's say they've been communicating with them or um, had some kind of agreement with them over the yeah. years. Um, what, and and, it, and it, you actually kind of think about like what kind of people or things they are. If they're letting all this happen without people knowing about it and they're using this hardware for a um, look at more kind of um, military vehicles or kind of things like yeah. that for weapons and all that. I mean, what does that tell you about them? Well, it's just it, it's just a massive cover up, isn't it? That, that's basically what it is. <clears throat> give me a minute. I'll, I'll, if you give me a minute, I'll go there. I'm going to yeah, yeah, find, yeah, it's fine. find this. I'll find this uh, picture right and show you now. Yeah. So when you were saying about um, just why you do that, you've, has there been a treaty? Do you meet between us and the ETs? Yeah. Do you think there has? I think well, it's it's a hard one, you know. I mean, you've got the you've got the things where they've said um, that there's been some Air Force base where there was a meeting between ETs and and the US military and, and things like that. I mean, but at the same time, um, I don't know. There's it's, there's there's no evidence to it, you know. What I mean, but people say that's yeah. happened. You know what I mean? There's um, Edwards Air Force Base. That's it. Yeah. People say that happened, and then there'll be some agreement in there about in regards to abductions or um, things like that. I mean, Terry Lovelace. Terry Lovelace stated that he was for the military, um, yeah. and he he had abductions and stuff like that. And some of the stuff that he'd said that that there was some kind of agreement between the government um, and them, and that's they're allowed to take X many people. Um, for whatever genetics or yeah. or pro um, creating stuff like that. I mean, so yeah. So, it's, so it's, it's a, think, one. yeah. Sorry. So who do you think, if there is a treaty signed, who do you think the terms, the terms this this treaty were on? Because I don't think it'd be on ours. I'd think it'd be on theirs. I. Well, I mean, the, the, see. See the mad thing is, right? I I I don't know. I mean, it's a it's a hard one, that right? But yeah. um, when you look at a thing that's happened, and you look at the many people's been abducted, uh, abducted and stuff like that, right? Yeah. And then when you you hear some of the stories, uh, 
different people being abducted. That we hear stories of when like ETs or whatever are relaying information. They're saying that they're no one. They can't get involved, and um, they can't get involved in their business. Basically, I mean, they need to get yeah. let, let us be right. But if you think that, well, why is there abductions happening and stuff like that? But and the reason behind that is because there's there's multi different. Um, a number of different um aliens here or whatever, right? Yes, races. Yes, yes. And they're all yeah. they're all and they're all doing stuff to do the experiments. Some are doing experiments, some are helping us, some are not helping us, some are using us. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Just, yeah. So that's that's the kind of when you, when you read into some of the stuff where like the Dolores Cannon stuff. And um, yeah, yeah. that's what kind of she can kind of found. You know what I mean? That there's like multiples of different ones and then there's like people who do want to see us go on better, but it's I mean, when you delve into all that stuff, though, it goes into um, the, the Dolores Cannon stuff about us being created or, or, or put here, right? Yeah. But the interesting thing with that is, when you, you look at stuff like, say, Dolores Cannon, um, who's, if you don't know who Dolores Cannon is, it basically, there's a, there's a lot of aggression in the 60s and then found that, if you take people by that, they were, she found during that as well, they were going back to past lives and even other that as well, just finding people who would be abducted. And she could actually go in and communicate with these people on another level. Some of them yeah. anyway. And then um, she found that we she could talk to the beings and stuff like that, right? And this, this went on for years and um, up to quite recently. And still people still do it. It's called QHHT. And um, she found that there was a number of different races. And it, she's not just hearing it from one person. So it's not a case that she's regressing somebody and they're telling them the same story. She was regressing multiple different people that were telling them the same story. Right, so they're yeah. telling them like a origin story or a multiple origin story, different um, ETs or whatever, coming here and some experiment. Someone had actually created us. Some had um, they were maybe um, malevolent, and um, yeah. there's supposed to be rules and rules attached to it all, right? Um, but some there are other ones that they, they basically didn't listen to the rules. So you've got all that going on, right? About the whole kind of creation thing. Yeah, you look at stories. The biblical stories of Paul Wallace, right? When he was referring back to the stuff where about us being, it's like kind of Prometheus story about us being um, um, put here as well, right? But the interesting yeah. thing is now, when you look at people I've mentioned before, when you look at like Bob Monroe, right, for the Monroe Institute, when he done astral traveling, and he went yeah. right back, and he had, so the, the main kind of thing findings he found out why we're here was that we were created as well, right? We right. were created and put here by some, right, for some reason. Right, when you when you listen to me in recent times, right, people like Doctor Gary Nolan, right, he's brought up on a number of different podcasts that people are probably not listening to, and it's probably over their heads that he's came out with a few times. He said things like, "What if you found out you were farmed? Where would you, yeah. where would you, what would you think about that now?" And like Gary Nolan's in the know. I mean, for the that yeah, thing yeah. I talked about earlier on with the that group in the eighties called the Advanced Theoretical uh, Working Group, that's been on the day. And he's involved in that kind of stuff. I mean, he's in the know of something. I mean, him and like Louisa is on though, they're, they're, they're getting something for somewhere. So he comes out with some statements, and then again, he's mentioned the farm statement a few times. Um, yeah. And he's about the consciousness and being farmed and all that kind of stuff, and about us being here. And there's like, a lot of things like that. And he came out recently um, in a podcast and said basically that um, somebody asked him, So what do you think, percentage wise, that there's something else here? And he said 100%, definitely. I know yeah. that. So what what would you think then if because I I thought about this if we what if we are farmed that's probably the most scariest thought of everything I thought about. But I mean it's it's a, it's a mad it's a mad thought right but it depends what for. I mean that's, when people, that's when people scary, automatically when people automatically think if you think you're farmed for something right people automatically yeah. think you're farmed for food right yeah but. It's not the case. You know I mean, it's, it's supposed to be not the case. Um, there are a couple of different kind of ideas in that. The one with Bob Monroe thinks he calls it Lush, right? And yeah. the, analogy, the analogy he gives is that let's say, for example, there's cows in a field. Yeah. And they, um, they, they, they're, they're eating and they generate milk. And something they generate too milk, too much milk. Yeah. Um, yeah. Or their calves, or maybe they've got calves and all that kind of stuff. And that excess milk is taken away, right? Um, the cows are no nee, nee different either or for it, right? So he said, Bob Monroe basically said that we were farmed for lush and it was like 
some type of, it seemed to be like some type of energy or something like that, right? That was one explanation for it. The other explanation was it just basically we were we were here, we were put here for um, something else in regards to for like working. And then we were yeah. genetically modified through there and developed mere consciousness and all that kind of stuff. And that's and that's there. And the, the reason you maybe get like the, the things coming in. I'm not saying this is all my ideas and it's all what I no, think. No, no, no. Some things that I've read and whatever, right? It's just like things that what people have put across as theories. Um is other things where religions were put in place obviously to try and keep us in check a bit. Yeah. Because you see the same stories threaded through multiple different religions through the years. So yeah. um so it's interesting. That's an interesting book. One one of the ones I read recently was called um, um, "Escaping from Eden" from a guy called Paul Wallace. Worth reading. It's quite good. And that goes back and goes back into um, a lot of stuff to do with um, Genesis and about like right. the creation story. And um, it's, it's quite good. Like. Hmm. So, all right then. So going back, sticking with the farming. Um, theory what if we're farmed and then all these different types of cryptids are here to feed off our fit our energy fear and that's what we're it because you've got all these different things going on and everyone keeps saying about the the here they're here to create fear and they're feeding off our fear mm. what if we're farmed solely for that but we've got other stuff going on to make us not think about it Maybe that I mean, I, I don't know. that that that's kind of that was kind of one of the um, kind of like that with the Bob Monroe thing. Um, yeah, because he was saying it was like that it had more intensified during wars what it was, but then he put it down at the end. It was the day of love and stuff like that because that was more yeah. love made a more um, refined whoosh or whatever it was. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but I, I mean, but you, you hear these stories like that as well, almost well, like yeah, like things that seem to be feeling fear or negative energy and stuff like that. But I mean, it's it's weird. You, so the, now you look at all this yeah, stuff yeah. now, though, right? You look at the whole kind of UFO thing and the UAP thing, but it's um, it links into so many different things because when you see people get abducted and stuff, you don't see them, but when you hear people get abducted, sometimes it's a, a yeah. physical thing, sometimes it's like an astral thing. So and then sometimes it links into consciousness and a lot of things like that as well. So it's like where do you stop there? I mean, you look at the whole Skinwalker Ranch, just using that place as an example. Um, yeah. Multiple, multiple kind of phenomena there, which is it's just totally it's totally mad. You know what I mean? But the, the mad thing I've got here with Ria is um, there's so much different types of phenomena out there that you wouldn't even link in with UFOs or anything like that, which is. It's just strange and crazy. We know nothing about. Yeah, but it's just there is, like you said, there's just so many questions. But that, that to me, that would make sense if we are being farmed. Then we're going to be farmed for our energy. Mm -hmm. And obviously, the other stuff that we're doing while we're here. But to me, that would make more sense than anything else is energy farming. So. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what to make of it, to be honest with you. But, but to some of the other questions that may come up. So if you look at, if you look at some of the stuff, right, where if if this is true, the community say that right, UFOs, UFOs are, are true. We've got twelve sitting in a hangar. We're trying to develop them. We're not getting in with them. All that kind of yeah. stuff. Or we have developed them. We've made. We're not going to come and say we've made X, Y, and Z because they want to keep them all to secrets and stuff like that. Yeah. But at the same time. At the same time, if you think to yourself, well, well, people have seen like flying triangles and all that kind of stuff and things like that. And yeah. Quite a lot of people attribute yeah, yeah, yeah. to be like um, man-made craft. You look at like the stealth bombers, stealth fighters. No, I mean they're they're now they're probably I don't know how old are they now? Forty year old or something like that now. Forty. Oh, yeah. 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 Like All right. So like you look at think about what they've got now. You know what I mean? Or even what they had came back then. So, yeah, yeah. some of that stuff, and then you hear the other other kind of stories as well, like secret space programs and, and things like yeah. that. You know what I mean? So, where does it stop? I mean, that's, I'm not saying I believe all the secret space program stuff, but then you look at stuff where you had like David Wilcox and the whole Corey Good story and all that. 
Yeah. Didn't want any of that kind of stuff, right? Because it's I just didn't really listen to David Wilcox because he's ruined mere documentaries in a postcon shite. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. But uh, apart from um, apart from that, the stories like, for example, with Gary McKinnon. Gary McKinnon, when he um, basically hacked into NASA, hacked into NASA, uh, or like some of the Defense Department stuff, and got yeah. like. Um, the things he was getting, it was like he got pictures and that, but he didn't always to print them off. But he got stuff where it was like off world vehicles, off world, yeah. um, basically, um, what do you call it? Employees and all that kind of stuff. And I mean, so I had lists of people who were working off yeah. world, you know what I mean? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. and multiple different ships that were working off world, right? And they had the names of the ships, and the only names of the ships that actually were out and about and out, as in that when they see, they were like spacefaring ship so you had there was like loads of stuff like that right so where does that stuff come from if that's true because that was that was yeah. one of the the biggest hacks that they ever had they tried to basically extradite them and their government uh, turned them down they didn't they didn't get them but um it was one of the biggest hacks that they they thought they were trying to get them extradited to, to basically get them across to america um for what he found and stuff like that but in, interesting story with the gallery kind of stuff so if you look at any of that if you think any of that's true you can link it in, we obviously, they've got this technology and developing that, but they're not going to be that far ahead that quick. So somebody's been helping them. Yeah, definitely. When you, when you look at, when you look at loads of other stories, there's other stories where things like, where, I'll go back to Terry Lovelace, for example, it's not the only one, where Terry Lovelace said, this is back in the 70s, when there was like a, like a massive triangle that took them on board. He said that was yeah. manned by, we humans. And, yeah. and, and like greys or like larger type kind of, um, Mantids or whatever it was. I mean, but he said that there was, there was, it was manned by humans as well, and coveralls and stuff like that. So, um, all that kind of stuff. You know, what I mean, it's, it's it's mad. Like, where does it where does it end? I know. Oh, that's it. It's, I don't think it ever will. So, do you think that the disclosure would just be UFO related? Or do you think it'll cover everything, like cryptids? Well, I, I think it'll be, I think it'll, stuff. see, I think it'll start like that. It's going yeah. to start like that, because, um, as, as, as nickname said, there's far too much evidence, right? But we'll, we'll end up with having, it's going to start with the UFO situation, right? But then yeah. that's going to escalate on a, people are going to start asking questions about abductions, because if they turn around and say, right, I, we, we know there's, there's bodies look like this, and people say, "Well, that's the buggers that abducted me." You know I mean, if you're in Colombia yeah, yeah. or whatever else, or or whatever, so it's like that's the next question is going to go on. So if that comes out about obviously craft, then it's like Casey. There's millions of people being abducted, right? There's oh, a lot of evidence yeah. for that. You know what I mean, or, or no, no, but a lot of like witness, witness testimony. Like but you've got that kind of stuff. Um, mm. Obviously, the back engineering craft. How they're working with it, how far it was back. Um, then obviously how it's linking into consciousness. Because yeah, like so when you when you look at a lot of that stuff now, it's like it's to do with even what um Tom DeLong had said, it was what he did with consciousness when he was talking to people for Lockheed Martin. Yeah. About the craft and flying the craft and stuff like that. But that's no far fetched to imagine, like using oh, no. to fly a craft because like you know you can sit there, like you can have like a, a neural link or something like that. I mean, it's yeah. no far case to think that can happen. You know, no. I mean, it's only it's only frequencies and waves and stuff like that. Well, they reckon yeah. the, the we have the ability to use thought process, don't they? Yeah, it's already possible. So yeah, it, it's strange. I did have a question for you, but it's gone, and it's annoying because someone put it in the chat, and I would have to go through every single comment to find out what it was. And I ain't got time for that. I'll be here all night. Right. Am I going to find this? Going to find this? This picture? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Give me a, give me a minute. Right. I'll find it. Yeah. Well, you find that. I'll just. I'll. In fact, well, you look for that. I'll look for this. Um, what they put in? I think I don't know if it was nickname. Or it's even nickname, Jojo. Oh, it could have been Stockholm. Uh, it could be anywhere in here. 
I haven't got a clue. Nickname, nicknames, but what was it on the lines of? Something to do with what we're talking about. Oh, yeah, remembered. Right. Um, missing 411. So why do you think, then, that some people that are abducted, some are returned, and some just end up never coming back? Yeah, That's not me. just... That's not just to you, but to people in the viewers in the chat. Why certain ones returned and then they keep coming back to get them and take them and bring them back and all that. But then you've got all these other missing 411s that just never, never reappear. Have they got something about them that they need so they keep them? Right. I'm just trying to find this thing to show you. Yeah, it's right. Um, yeah, while you do that, I'll just reiterate that we now have Super Chat, so you can donate in the chat. You can become a member. Um, I'm going to do a new page on the website where it's just going to be a list of all the members and each, what each level are. There is a new membership level coming out. I think I'm going to do it around the new year. Um, it's not going to be that much more than the one we've got, but there's going to be a lot of extras on there. And um, I think I'm just going to stick with them too for the time being. And if anyone wants to win a ticket or two people to win a ticket for each day at the Manchester Expo at Bowlers, on the 26th and 27th of August. Um, there will be a link on the website for that. I'll be doing a live stream. Um, not decided how I'm going to give the tickets away yet. It might be a prize draw. If it is, I'll do a live names in a hat and pick one out. And whoever wins, they get it. You would have to make your own way there. And you would have to enter with me. Can I find that? <laughs> He's all right. Yeah, I'll get, I'll, get a picture, I'll get a picture on the show notes. Yeah, yeah that's fine. Uh, yeah, the only downside to winning that ticket is that you have to uh, go to the conference with me. Once you get in there, you can go off and do whatever you want. You don't have to stay with me all day. I won't put that on anyone, to be honest with you. <laughs> that's why I work on my own. And I need with Andy. <laughs> one night, one night only. I should call it one night only. No, the fact it's two well, minutes. One other thing that's happened recently as well. Um, I'm hoping it happens, but um, Timber Shet, Congressman, had mentioned yeah. that potentially there's going to be hearings at the end of this month. So um, it's no came out yet that um, he's he's alluded to there's potentially going to be hearings at the end of this month. This is like right. whistleblower hearings. Ah, right, okay. So, because if, if you notice in the past, there's been quite a good few things that's happened in July. So, like, reports will come out in July and June, stuff like that. So, um, yeah. that was kind of one of the things that, that might potentially happen at the end of this right. month. Um, and this is, they said, he said there's, there's, there's credible people came, there's credible people came forward with, with stories, uh, hands-on um, information, yeah. uh, retrieval programs, back engineering. Yeah programs legacy programs things like that so um that'll be quite interesting to see if that comes up so it's worth watching these when they come up um oh yeah the, the mad thing is though you don't you don't know when they happen because it's like the news cycles that really follow you so it's um it's, it's a hard one to actually try and get on the news or anything like that but if you carry into twitter ufo twitter or uap twitter usually can you find people can you post them up and stuff um get yeah. linked in yeah so what was the thing you talked about with um would you call it um, to, 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 uh, missing 411? What was that, sorry? What was it you mentioned before, missing 411, but people disappeared, yeah, so, coming back? Um, someone, that's right, I'm just going to find the comment. Right, so I'll put this up first. So you got the missing 411 where a lot of people get abducted and they get brought back, and then there's a lot more supposedly that don't ever return so stockholm was put the missing of the above average intelligence may be taken for their dna 
But I get that, but why? I'm presuming some are kept and they don't return them. Is that to start another life session somewhere else? I don't know you put that one with the with the um they said it was almost like a portal the hunter was yes. walking they said it was almost like we're going into somewhere else like a portal but there's there's like strange stories in the world on this with things like that where there was one where um forestry workers seen like a small a small type ufo pick up a pick up a moose and take it yeah. away um and they, they attributed that then a something to do with the prions um and like obviously like the prions in regards to um in the blood causing like right, some okay. kind of yeah, yeah. Something like a disease or whatever else and, and sharing it to do with that like some kind of like um the one in the the human ones a uh, young cell what's it called again a uh, yakub disease cry cell yakub disease cgd yeah yeah the activity and stuff like that where it was like um it's almost like these things are trying to find they're doing cattle mutilations to try and actually find where these prions are. It's going to cause right. it potentially wipe out a lot of people because yeah, because if you take if you just take samples, then what if they run out? I'm guessing they're going to run out, run out the samples, so they have to keep coming back. Therefore, wouldn't it be easy just to take the full load of it and keep it there? Hmm. Don't know. It's a mad one. Mad yeah. one. Yeah, that's I mean, that, that's what I'm saying. Well. So it's, going to, it's going to generate so much things. I think we'll find out something this year. I'm going to be quite positive. Um, but the thing is, as well, I mean, you didn't really need to convince, probably. It's, it's like the you need to convince everybody else. We're probably in the kind of believer scale, but we're just like, oh, we can turn and say, I told you so. Yeah. Like family and friends and that told you so. Look, it's on the news now. I know, yeah. Yeah. Um, um, I can't wait for that day. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's interesting. You so. If you're not into it, if you're not into following it, it's like um, I had a colleague who I was working with up north, and he, one of the contractors I've discussed about like UFOs. I was, I was quite surprised he could even was in here. So I was talking to my yeah. colleague, and he wasn't in here, and we're talking about the David Grush stuff that just came out, and yeah. he was just like, nah, "I didn't believe that. That's kind of bullshit and, and stuff like that." Yeah. And then. Um, but we were talking about it obviously like this is happening now in congress and the senate in america they're actually coming out with it there's people in canada coming out with stuff new as well but the five eyes that's like related to like um uk and that and canada and, yeah, France yeah. and things like that as well in australia and then he uh, tried to tell him all that and he's like nah nah i didn't believe that and then he pinged my message like the following week asked me for can you send me the link to the documentary you spoke about so i kind of came away thinking it was going to be quite hard to, to release this to people but it's not it just takes a bit of um, traction with stuff. The, the issue we've got is when it hits the news cycles, it's only in news for like a, a small snippet at the end of the news, a couple of minutes yeah. after the weather or something like that. I mean, it needs to yeah. be. It, you notice it now, like, see the BBC thing where whoever's um, the BBC um, presenter, whoever it is, like that's been on the news for the past, like, since it started every day, right? Yeah. Headline and news, right? It's no massive news. I mean, it isn't it? And uh, it's on every single day, and it's on every time you get the news cycles going on, right? About this presenter, right? If you imagine you had that talking about these hearings in the Senate, the David UAPs, uh, more people would know about it. So there's, there's a job that needs to happen, maybe. Right? I know there's more news organizations discussing yeah. UFOs and taking it a bit more serious, but it's still not getting pushed out as much as it should. Yeah. To get Joe public yeah. and more interest in it and take it on board. Yeah, so, right, got a couple of questions, and then I'll go into some of the talking points, if that's okay. Yeah. So, this is from Nickname, and she wants to know, has Chris seen Ross Colfer on Project Unity saying there is a giant craft with a building? Up? Oh, is that the one you was talking about? Yeah, it's about that one. Yeah. Right, yeah, fight. That's right, ignore me. Right, um, next one, Stockholm Pearls. What does Chris think of the animal? Um, don't know if you can say that word. Is that mutilation? Yeah, I'm not sure if we can say it. People get booted off for saying less than that, but we're saying animal mutilations. Yeah, I never knew that. (laughs) (laughs) Apparently, so yeah. 
I don't, I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of different theories on that animal mutilations, but that was one of them I spoke about there about yeah. um, checking about prions and the brain and stuff like that. But then again, you look at things where they're taking like um, rectal cavities and all that kind of stuff, bits of the cheek, eyes, all that kind of stuff. I mean, it's yeah. uh, it's a strange one. It's all the soft that. tissue, isn't it? I I kind of thought I, I kind of used to think it would do with, like something to do with, like DNA, no DNA, but something to actually kind of to put towards maybe DNA or something like that to use. Yeah. But um, it just, it just seems something. to be like main organs, doesn't it? I sometimes it is. It's, it's different. I mean, it's it's a, it's a strange one, but I mean, I think I reckon it's, it's something to do with it's something to do with creating something. Right, I'm not saying yeah. about create like a cow or anything like that, but it's using some of that tissue material to create something. And the other thing is as well where the there's other there's other things going on where there's, for example, deer population and other animals get abducted, but um, mutilated for the fact that it's the David prions, some of the David prions, and yeah. and the uh, the brain or like the blood or whatever. You know what I mean, because of the fact that it's 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 causes um, what do you call it? Kytel Jakob disease, or like uh, mad cow yeah. disease, as it's called. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, that, and the, that, that and the food chain. That and the food chain. I mean, that's yeah. what it is, because they're not wiping, is it? Another question, then. What I've just thought about this. I might have mentioned it previous, but I don't remember doing. So, you know, like, they, they take people or animals from here. What if, then, these cryptids that we're seeing are creatures that have been taken from their time they forgot where they've taken them from and just dumped them back here. Maybe. I mean, is that uh, possible? You think well, that's one, of, one of the one of the ex, one of the best explanations I've seen for that was like it was a Doris Cannon one where they were saying that obviously there's you hear the like, the light spectrum we can't see everything right, and there's other existences that run yeah. alongside us that we can't see. They can't yeah. see us. We can't see them. But every now and again, the merge or the yeah, just, converge together, and and things come through. People yeah. go, people go through time slots. People go to different places, never come back. People they come back and say, yeah. "I've been somewhere." Sometimes you get strange, strange creatures running about and then they disappear. Yeah, you know what I mean. So you get a lot of kind of strange. That, that one of the best, one of the kind of best explanations I've for that. But these, it was I told us Hannah one again about the different dimensions converging, and there's certain points that converge. Now and yes. again, and that's why you get window areas, and that's why you get strange shit coming through. Yeah, I was actually I was watching that the other night, to be honest, when she was saying about the time and time slips, because she was talking about how time doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. It was all it was all, all part of the same bit, but you know, I've I've often wondered that that are they taking creatures and they're like, well, I don't know where we got it from. We'll just we'll come here and yeah. drop. Pick some up, we'll drop these just, off just don't, we'll just don't there. there. Yeah. Just Make some there. room. We'll kick the these predator, out. It's like the predator, they've got all the different ones in their ship. All the skeletons yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. Can't escape to there. So, it, it could be a thing. Or maybe they do it to mess with us. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the thing, though. I mean, the, the, that's the, whole, the sort of thing I'd do. The, the thing is, though, the whole kind of UFO rabbit hole, though, when you're doing that, and you start looking at other stuff, and the yeah. more you look at it, the more you, you, it looks like it, it makes sense. You know what I mean? It's, it's mad. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So we are coming towards the end of this. Um, we could always do a part two on it if you wanted. Get any more updates? Yeah, I, mean, I, I think there's going to be... There'll be more stuff can happen within Congress and all that anyway. So I'm going to kind of follow that um, yeah. and go through there. I mean, but if there's yeah. hearings, I'm going to try and watch the hearings if you can. Yeah, um, well, we... We've got six weeks, haven't we? So there should be yeah. a lot happening in that time period. Plenty, um, plenty to talk about, isn't it? Yeah. Right. So this is from Jojo, and she has put, watched a channel that had, had info from a whistleblower saying, in the USA, there is underground bases that do use cryptids and produce hybrids. Uh, hybrids. What's your take? Don't know, don't know about the whole cryptid thing, but I've heard of the whole hybrid thing, like on bases and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, um, I've not heard of the, the, any stories with the cryptids and bases and stuff. The hybrids, I yeah. heard the day. Yeah. Do you think we could, we might be 
some sort of hybrid. Oh, totally. I mean, I, that's that going back to the Genesis stories and stuff like that. We've been developed. Yeah. Even even Lou Elizondo said that as well. He was talking about when you read between the lines some of the stuff he was saying. He was talking about um, information. He was talking about how would you if you wanted to store information, where would you store it? Right, and one of the questions we put to the guy, um, Kurt Jamungo on um, Toll Podcast, um, Theories of Everything, and he said, Well, I'd yeah. make a, a monolith and I'd maybe put it in space and a retrograde orbit or whatever else, and put it in the moon so it's not going to diminish or whatever. And he said, Well, can you think again? Can you, where, where else could you put it? And he said, Well, and he was talking about putting it in DNA. He goes, What if you put that information into DNA? And he yeah. started talking about stuff going back like 70,000 years and all that. And you think, Where is he getting this from? Okay, this is a guy who he's had a military career, he's he's been an intelligence guy, and then he's worked in the ATIP program. But what he's seen and what he knows, and he's starting to come up with stuff to do with consciousness and to do with, do with um genetics dating back 70,000 years and all that. Okay, well, where's yeah. that coming from? Mad. It's, so mad. it's just the uh, it's just that's a case of uh, if you look at these people who are in the know. Are apparently in the know and they're talking about the UAP situation and government programs. They're also talking about consciousness. They're also talking about that yes. aspect. Of it. Like the guy who worked with um, Tom DeLong, Jim Semivan, and and uh, would you call it his kind of thing that Tom DeLong brought to, to the Stars Academy? Um, Jim Semivan, a senior CIA guy, he talks yeah. about consciousness, he's talking about abductions, he's talking about all that as well. You know what I mean? It's and same with Gary Nolan. Yeah, you know, this guy's like a Harvard professor. You know what I mean? And it's like yeah. they're all talking about the same stuff. It's not just about nuts and bolts craft. No. That's where the next conver- that's where the next conversation is going to go. Eh? Yeah, you know, I was gonna, yeah, I was just going to say because you've got. In, I was while well, I was listening to um, Skinwalkers of the Pentagon, they was talking about the different coloured orbs and what effect they have on people. Yeah, there's only you know there's only a couple of stories in there, but the effect they had life changing effects just by brushing past people. Yeah. Yet the Pentagon is supposed to know all of this that's going on, but same sort of thing. They're not disclosing any of it. Well, well Gary Nolan, Gary Nolan was brought in by the CIA to look at people that had um, exposure to UEP and orbs and stuff like that. Yeah, because they because they could find something within, like for example, within their brain, a signature. Yes. Um, yes, that was that. it. You could find a signature within, like, certain part of their brain or whatever if they've been exposed to it. Some have died there. Yeah, but one um, one as well that these specific orbs were only going to people that had this particular. Oh, I can't remember what it was. Something to do with their blood. No sure about that. I mean, but I get. I know there was I'd one where to, I'd have to re-listen to it. There was an orb. There was an orbit pass through one of the one of the um, the scientists who was working at an OSAP. Yeah. And it went in his shoulder and came out, and it ended up they recorded it all, and they managed to um, scientifically can take it over time. But what was wrong with him and all that kind of stuff, and it, it ended up it came into like some type of cancer, but didn't metastasize. Yeah. What What are you trying to it comes ah, it was yeah, and they, seen, they, seen, they were working on like one of them was working on Skinwalker Ranch or whatever. Yes. And um and it, they seen two of them in a field and one passed, I think there were either two or three of them, one passed over the windshield, one passed in yes. the car and across one. them, and one went in his shoulder. And he said yeah. it, just felt, it just felt like an air bubble going through his body. But yeah, he ended up, they, like recorded, really... they, they recorded that in OSAP and they recorded yeah, he said it was really that cold, that wasn't it, when right. it went through. They recorded the medical effects of him over a number of years, and yeah. whatever this this thing, uh, uh, I get burned them to start off, whatever else, but it ended up it, it got cancer or whatever, but then it metastasize. It ended yeah. up like he, he passed. Well, he said he had he had a dream that he met these alien type creatures. Like he said, it felt like an out of body experience, and he said, "Don't worry, we will fix, we will sort this, or we will fix it." Mm-hmm. And then from then on, it was like was it about two and a half years? That he went through all this really bad stuff, like, mm-hmm. like all the, the medical, the, and it's just everything went downhill from there on. The, the, the mad thing is, though, right, that if uh, you, you think to yourself, right, so well, what I said earlier on about the whole private industry thing, 
right? I'll leave you with yeah. this. The whole private industry thing, that's one aspect there, but the money, chase the money, paid up the UFOs, try to keep that enclosed for that, right? And that's what you do with that. But if you look at maybe, for example, where they maybe try to keep it secret because they want to protect the public, but whatever they yeah. know about the phenomena, is that mad, and it's not even just religions or anything like that, it's that scary that they don't want to tell us. No. You know I mean, I don't think it is that, because you wouldn't get people like Lula Zondo trying to get the truth out if he can he knows some stuff. Well, no. Well, obviously, they're hiding some of it. You always hear this, you hear this date as well, 2027, for some reason. Yeah, I, well, I kept it in 2025 and then they put it back two years. So, 2027, Chris Bledsoe talked about 2027, and there is John Ramirez, the CIA guy. Um, yes, he talked, about, he talked about 2027. He said he knows that in an official capacity. Interesting thing as, as well, though, right? Chris Bledsoe, I'll just mention this Chris, Chris Bledsoe got paid into NASA, right, and shown in NASA and all that kind of stuff. This is NASA, it doesn't take nothing to be UFOs. I've just looked into it now, right? But back in the day, we had me Chris Bled, so they took him in there and, and interviewed him, talked to him about that, because he was obviously seeing a lot of this stuff. Prior to Chris Bled, so though, when you look back at the stories with John Keel, um, the guy who had the visitations for Andrew Cole, his name's Darren Berger or something like that, he, oh, yeah, also yeah. Claimed, he, he also claimed that he got taken into NASA, interviewed and shown in NASA and all that kind of stuff. The exact same as Chris Bledsoe said. Um, so I, yeah. so, and this is NASA who doesn't really, who's just looking at it, isn't it? Anyway. Yeah, well, I was chatting to Chris Bledsoe a while ago. I'm just waiting for him to confirm about coming on the show. So I've, he's got, he needs to go through his agency and his publishers, but um, mm. just waiting for the confirmation. So it's all good. Cool. Have a good but, day. Yeah. But um, I'll just a little bit more information on that. Apparently, it's a, the blue orbs that inflict um, bad stuff. The, the blue minis. Yeah, the blue ones. Yeah. So far, so far, it's just the blue ones that are really bad. And if you see a blue orb, get out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty much it, isn't it? Really? Yeah. So I think we should do a part two to this. Do you reckon? Yeah, cool. Go for that, yeah. Yeah, like I said, by by then we'll have a lot more information than, or we should have a lot more information than what we've got now. So, right. Well, thank you, Chris, for coming on again. Cheers, Andy. Cheers, everybody in the chat as Always well. Always a pleasure. Um, yeah, check out the pictures that we put up at the beginning of the show. Um, I'll be doing a live stream between now and next Friday to give the ticket away. We're going to Canuck. Chase the 9th to the 10th of September. That's Saturday to Sunday. So if you want to go, go to the website, drop me an email. It's just direct link. Just click on the button, it'll take you straight there. And if you want to become a member, it's $3.99 a month and you'll get member chat. And there is going to be, well, we are doing a live stream from Canuck, and that's going to be for members only. So that it, there's all different things going on. I'm going to do a prize draw every month and get rid of loads of crap that I don't want anymore. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's all, it's all going to be good stuff. So that's it. Um, there is no live stream on Friday because I am preoccupied with family shenanigans and what have you. But on Tuesday for one hour, we've got Andrew Collins coming on talking about his book, The First Female Pharaoh. So that's 7 o'clock on the 18th. On the 19th, we're doing a live investigation. There should be some more mem new members coming with me to do the investigation. I'll disclose the location once we start the live stream. And then on the 21st, we've got Amanda Quill and Rob Demarest from Ghost Hunters. And they're coming back on. And we're going to be chatting to them. So that's all I've got. If you do become a member as well, you'll see all the streams that we've got lined up between now and the end of the year. So you'll be able to see all the guests. That that will all get released as we go through one week at a time. So that will drop so that it's visible for everyone. Um, just quickly, though, with the live streams, whether it's a guest or a live investigation, the ones that are going to be members only 
it'll only be members only for a week or 10 days. After that, you guys will be able to see it. It just makes it fair for the ones that are paying <coughs> to get priority over everyone else. Sorry, my throat's gone. My voice is gone. <coughs> oh, good job not doing one on Friday, isn't it? I won't be able to speak. <laughs> yeah, so it's just so the members get priority because they're paying each month to watch. So they get that little bit more than anyone else. Um, and that's it, really. Is there anything you want to add, Chris? No, not at all. Just, uh, well, thanks for the chat, folks. And uh, thanks, Andy. And we'll catch up soon. I'll be listening very, very eagerly for getting any, um, what do you call it, yes. hearings at the end of this month as well. But um, what I also do as well, I'll share that um, UAP report we've done with the UK. Yes. Um, we had you had a link. And quite big. Yeah, I'll, in I'll put it in the description. Anything you send me, I'll just stick it in here. And but yeah, this no. is going out on podcast anyway as well, so I can put it on there. Yeah, there's quite I'm a lot sorry. in it. Sorry, four or five hundred pages, and it's uh, right. no defence significance though. <laughs> yeah, well, it, it's all good. So, right, thank you everyone in the chat. Uh, <coughs> sorry, I'm, gonna, <coughs> I'm choking to death here. I'm going to have to go. Uh, yeah, so nothing this Friday. See you again next Tuesday with Andrew Collins. Have a great weekend, everyone, and see you then. Good night. Cheers, guys. Take care. Cheers.